Hit the Skinny Podcast, only on Local12.com. Now, here's Richard Skinner. Welcome into the Skinny Podcast. It's the weekly potpourri edition. I'm Richard Skinner, Local12.com, digital sports columnist and editor with Rick Boring. As each and every week, we talk about sports topics of local interest. We occasionally have a national topic. We have a gambling segment on many occasions and a segment where you can ask me a question on any topic. Go to the Twitterverse, hit up the hashtag Ask Skinny Anything. It does not have to be a sports question, although we get those from time to time. Honestly, the goofier, the better for me. Uh, Rick, I have enjoyed this NCAA tournament immensely. Other than watching guys jump at jump shooters and foul them beyond the three-point arc, it's making me crazy as a coach, but I guess it is what it is. But I got to tell you, um, this tournament we all thought going in was going to be crazy and weird things were going to happen. And it really has not disappointed whatsoever. Yeah. I, I hate to be prisoner of the moment guy. I always try to avoid that, but seriously, is this not one of the more memorable, exciting upset filled tournaments in, in recent history? I mean, I feel like we almost say that every year, but this one really feels a little different to me. It, it, it's been crazy since the start. Well, I mean, you know, you, you you see a 16 win, a 15 win, a 13 in Furman win, a 14 in Kennesaw scare, scare the daylights out of Xavier. Um, so, yes, it, it, I think it has been. I, I think it's you know, that speaks for itself. A year ago, I believe I read the average win margin for number one seeds was over 25 points in the first round in the first round. Yeah. This year you had a, a 16 seed pull off the upset. And we're going to talk about the NKU game here in a second. Right. You had another 16-1 game that was very good till the final minutes. Yeah, no, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's going to the, the the fact the 16 beat a one is going to skew the, the the margin completely. But no, I mean, it, it's it, it has been it's been fun to watch. Big moments. Um, it, it really has been. I mean, it it's it it is it has been one of the best ones I've seen in a long time. And I go back way further than you go back. All right, let's get into the local teams in action. Xavier, of course, is on to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2017. They beat Kennesaw State 72-67 in that first round game you were talking about where they struggled mightily for about 32 minutes or so and then poured it on a team that just wasn't as talented as them. And then in the second round, they handed it to Pittsburgh. 84-73 was the final, and to be honest with you, the game wasn't that close. It was a 20-point game in the second half, and they, they didn't score for the final like six or so minutes in terms of field goals. They they made just enough free throws to hang on. They'll face Texas in the Sweet 16 this Friday, the last game of the night, somewhere around 10 o'clock. It'll likely tip off. Skinny, what would you make of Xavier's performance over the first weekend of the tournament? Yeah, I, I know people are going to point to the Kennesaw State game and, and say that's why Xavier can't go much further than where it's gone. And, and I don't. I mean, I, you, it's just it's the tournament and you got to find a way to win. And down 13, they found a way to come back and, and win. And then you're right. I thought I mean, that first half was an utter clinic against Pitt. Um, you know, they did struggle a little bit down the stretch at the foul line. Um, you know, Desmond Claude struggled there, but he was one of six guys to score in double figures. But that first half. So I was writing a running game story to put on our website as soon as the game was over, right? About 500 words worth. And and so I usually write a little quick first half synopsis at the bottom of the story when the first half is over. And I had the box score up and I wasn't paying close, close attention. And when I wrote the sentence of Xavier's 19 first half field goals, there were assists on 17 of them. I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, that, that is a clinic, man. And this team offensively is good enough. And I'm going to say it. I don't think they pull this off because they got a lot of mountains to climb here uh, based on seeds. This team offensively is good enough to win this thing. We've been talking all year about what are the expectations for this team? What is their upside in terms of making a tournament run? And I have stuck to, I think they can be a second weekend team. They have now proven that they're into right. the sweet 16. I think there's no doubt they have an opportunity to win this Texas game. I don't think they're going to be favored. I think it's going to be really difficult. It's a tough matchup for them, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that they win it. And then, I mean, it's going to be tough to pull off an elite eight win. It, it is any time you're there and this year in their region, it's pretty chalky. So, I mean, you're likely to probably face Houston, I would right. think. And that's definitely not going to be easy for this savior team. So, I don't I wouldn't necessarily say I see them getting to a final four this year and certainly not winning at all. But to your point, the way they played against Creighton in the semifinals of the Bees tournament and the way they played against Pittsburgh in the second round of the NCAA tournament, that team right there, 
that's capable of beating anyone in the country. When they play like that offensively, they're moving the ball like that. They're making shots. Everyone's playing pretty well, aside from Sule Boom through the first two rounds. I want to ask you about him. But if they're playing like that, they can compete with anyone in the country. That's their A game, and it's good enough. Yeah, there's no question. And and, and that's the point, you know. I, I think offensively they are good enough, and they have done that with with Sule Boom going through a little bit of a rut. Now he had obviously a, a big second half when he scored all fourteen of his points, and you look up and he also had seven rebounds and five assists. So he did a lot of things in that game to win. Um, but are, are, would you be concerned about him as a Xavier fan? I, I no, um, I, I can't put my finger on why he's in the rut. He's in offensively. I mean, could we argue it's minutes? Could we argue? Now that you're playing literally elite teams going forward, that maybe it's why you see he was at UTEP, and I'm not buying that because he played in the Big East all year and excelled all, all season. Yeah, and long. Kennesaw State isn't that either, by the yeah, way. Right. Like, so, no, right. That, and he really struggled right. against them. So it's right. like, is it something about the bright lights? Is he worn down? Because now if you go back to the Big East Championship, the game against Marquette, where no one really played well, but he certainly struggled in that one. That's three straight games that were high leverage games where he's – I wouldn't say been a no show, but he certainly struggled with his shot on the offensive end. Yeah, I just I just wonder, like I, I've I've been asking Xavier fans about that since the win over Pittsburgh. Like at some point, do you start worrying about Sule or is this just a, a couple game funk? And he's been so good all year that it's amazing this team has been able to win without him. But y- you feel more like he's due than anything else. Yeah, and I think that's where I would go with it. I think he's I feel like more like he's due. Um, I, I give him this. He, he doesn't lack for confidence. He doesn't stop looking to score and start yep. and, and look to create. But at the same time, I didn't think he really forced anything. I think he kind of let that game come to him in the second half. And you look up, I mean, let's not forget again, he had 14 points in a half. I mean, that's, that's pretty good production for a half of basketball, right? Well, and to your point, he filled up the stat sheet too. Like if yeah. you don't look at his field goal attempts where he was like two for 13 or three for 13 or whatever it was, it looks like he had a good game. It's like 14, seven, five, right. two or three steals, something like that. So yeah, I mean, to, to that point, he did end up, putting up some numbers in the second half and his points always get inflated at the end of the game because he becomes the designated free throw shooter sure. when the teams but are fouling. Yeah. yeah. And he, he, he should be, he's a closer and he hasn't been shaken in that regard at all. He was still clutched down the stretch, put the game away for him against Pittsburgh when they could put the ball in the basket on the offensive end, he was able to step up and, and make some free throws. So it's not like he hasn't been a factor. It's not like he hasn't done some good things, but he definitely has not been himself on the offensive end. We had a couple of questions that were submitted for Ask Any Anything, but they were related directly to Xavier in this game. So I want to ask him to you now. Ryan, our guy who who chimes in all the time, he asks, if Xavier is in the final four, it's because of blank. Fill in that blank, Skinny. Well, that's a good one. If Xavier is in the final four, it's because of blank. Um, I'll go with teamwork. Because I I think that's a big part. The way they move the ball, they're hard to guard. Yeah, I'll go with teamwork. I know that sounds very cliche-ish and, and simple-minded, but I'm not sure what other answer I, I could give you for that. Because of I can't say it's because of luck. I mean, it wouldn't be because of that. Um, no, I'm going to go because of teamwork. They're hard, they're hard to guard. When they're playing like they did against Pittsburgh, and again, I would throw that, Creighton game in the semifinals of the Big East tournament in there too as the same type of performance. I don't know exactly how to say it and probably teamwork's just the best way to do a kind of all-encompassing term here, but you're right. There's something about the way they're moving the ball in those games where their offense is just so crisp and on point that that that's their path. I mean, no matter what, they, they have to play well defensively. They have to rebound. They have to do other things, but their path is – be an elite offense the rest of the way. If they can play at that level, move the ball at that level, and be that efficient, they've got a chance. I yeah, and, that, and, that, and, I, and I think we've seen that. It's not, this isn't like a one-off. We've seen them do that at, a, a lot this season. They they just they have so many people. And now that that Jerome Hunter's giving them some some real consistent offense. Yeah. Now, maybe he doesn't do that against bigger front lines. I don't know. But he certainly has done it these two tournament games and been great in doing so. And that gives them another punch. And Desmond Claude, the con- I, I know he didn't show confidence at the foul line down the stretch. He really didn't. But right. otherwise, I thought he showed a ton of confidence in, in these games. Agree. I mean, he played 31 minutes in that game against Pittsburgh, had some great moments in it. I thought it was one of his better games aside from 
obviously he struggled, missed five free throws in the, in the clutch minutes there at the end. So uh, that's a freshman in the tournament. He's going to make some mistakes. You, you can live with that if he gives you 31 minutes of good defense and playing confidently on the offensive end. Uh, the second question that came through, Skinny, was with Xavier being the 